What's going on Guardians, it's Tizzle here, and in this video I'm going to be showing you every way to stun an Overload Champion in Destiny 2. Now, way back when champions were introduced, the only way of stunning a champion was with certain artifact mods. There were no exotics with intrinsic overload capability. I think the first exotic to get this treatment was Divinity, and even then that was only good for team play and not solo nightfalls. So you are basically stuck with using whatever the artifact mods were available for a given season. So in the case of this season, that would have been Overload Bow and Overload Autos and SMGs. In the past, if you wanted to stun Overload, you basically had to use one of these two weapon classes. But over time, more and more exotic weapons gained intrinsic ways of stunning all types of champions. And in Lightfall, Bungie made one of the greatest changes to the game in terms of build crafting and build flexibility, intrinsic stunning capabilities being tied to our 3.0 subclass verbs. So before we go any further, let's talk about the changes that Bungie made. If we hover over the overload icon on the character menu, it shows all the ways to stun an overload. So from our subclass verbs, we have the jolt effect from arc, the slow effect from stasis, and the suppression effect from void. And then we also have gear with intrinsic overload traits and the seasonal artifact perks. This video will be broken up into four main sections. Exotic weapons, exotic armor, intrinsic weapon perks that activate subclass verbs, and abilities. These will all be timestamped below so you can better find out the information that you're looking for. But if you want to see every possible way to stun an overload, then just watch the video the whole way through. Overload has more ways of stunning than anti-barrier, but less than unstoppables. A lot of work went into the testing of every single form of stunning an overload, so if you find this video helpful, then leaving a like and subscription would be greatly appreciated. I did extremely thorough testing and tested everything that was theoretically possible, so hopefully I didn't miss anything. At the end, I will also include some things that you think might work, but do not. Anyways, let's get into it. First up, we have exotic weapons. We'll start in the kinetic slot and work our way down. And there are actually no kinetic weapons with intrinsic overload capabilities. So we'll move down to the energy slot and talk about the OG overload stunning weapon, Divinity. This weapon is great for stunning overloads, as you only need to land a single shot to apply the stun. Overloads are notorious for jumping around and being annoying to stun. Weapons like autos and SMGs require sustained damage to proc the overload shot, so it can be tough to keep them from regening health. Weapons like autos and SMGs have an overload shot every so many rounds, so you have to lay on the target and hope you don't miss when the overload bullet comes up. This can make it tough to keep them from regening their health and overload bows require a full draw, and overload minotaurs and captains often blink through your shot which can be very frustrating, but divinity is great for keeping overload rounds on the target to keep them from regening their health. Speaking of overload bows, let's look at the next weapon, Le Monarch. This weapon has overload built into its poison arrow, so it actually doesn't stun on hit, but when the poison is applied. So you need a perfect draw to stun a champ, and there is a slight delay which can be the difference between life and death sometimes. One trick to note is on seasons with overload bow, you can run overload bow and that will apply overload without a perfect draw, which makes it more forgiving. And with the new surge modifiers, it will also apply surge to the bow. Lemon arc is great for keeping overload stunned, especially at a distance. You can peek shoot and the damage over time from the poison allows you to have some time to dip back behind cover rather than needing to sustain fire like with an auto rifle or SMG. It is great for solo GM play, and I actually used this bow to solo the Glassway GM last season. And lastly, for the weapons with intrinsic stunning capability, we have the ultimate overload stunning machine, Thunderlord. The background gameplay is in a master loss sector without arc burn, and this was before Bungie's latest patch that reduced combat difficulty and enemy health, and it absolutely chews through this champion. I've been using machine guns pretty regularly since Season of the Haunted, and with Lightfall they got a buff to their reserves, so they are the best they've ever been in my opinion. But even still, I have totally been sleeping on Thunderlord until this season, and more specifically, until I saw this thing melt a master champion with no Arc Singe. When Arc Surge presumably comes back next season, this gun should be high on your radar. I will definitely be using it. Now onto the weapons that can stun thanks to subclass verbs. First in the kinetic slot is the stasis exotic trace rifle Egger's Scepter. This weapon cannot directly stun an overload, but if you kill an enemy near an overload, it will spread slow to the surrounding area, and if that slow hits an overload champion, it will get stunned. Also, if you have the catalyst, then the will given form that drains your super will also apply the slow effect to an enemy, but this does use up your super energy, so it is not the most reliable weapon to use for stuns. 
especially if there are a lot of overloads to stun like in the Exodus Crash Grandmaster. However, in this mode, it can take out an overload pretty easily. Up next, we have an old favorite of mine, the Void Trace Rifle Ruinous Effigy. I actually love this weapon because it is so unique, and now it can suppress overloads with a big slam dunk attack. The melee from the orb and the life drain do not stun a champ, but if you dunk on a champ, it will apply suppression and stun it. It's pretty cool, but not the best for high-end nightfalls where getting into the fray can often get you killed, and unless you kill the overload in one go, you will not be able to keep it from regening its health after the initial stun, which is true for a lot of these weapons. The problem with overloads is that they regen health over time, so a lot of these intrinsic ways of stunning aren't all that great for solo play because if you can't kill it in one cycle really quickly, then it will just regen its health. Anyway, speaking of exotic void trace rifles, the wave splitter is also capable of melting overload champions when it has supercharged battery perk going. Simply collect an orb, and now the beam will apply suppression to a target. With Void being a seasonal surge, and the artifact perk Volatile Flow applying volatile rounds on orb pickup, this weapon has never been stronger. And the good thing about this is, as long as you have that perk going, then it will continuously apply suppression, which will prevent the overload from gaining its health back. Next we have the Collective Obligation Pulse Rifle from the Vow of the Disciple Raid, this weapon can leech volatile rounds, weaken, and suppression from enemies affected by those debuffs. It can then spread those debuffs to other enemies. So if you or a teammate has a way of suppressing an enemy, say with shield bash on titan or a suppression grenade on any class, then you can shoot that suppression round at an overload and stun it. This weapon is already quite strong in the right build, and this interaction just made it even better. And for the last energy weapon, we have the Delicate Tomb Fusion Rifle. When you collect an Ionic Trace, this weapon gets a buff called Tempest Cascade, which will jolt targets on hit. Now we move on to the heavy weapons, and I want to start with Two-Tailed Fox first. The Catalyst gives this a third rocket which applies jolt and is capable of stunning an overload. But the Void rocket it shoots also suppresses, so that can also stun an overload. However, as I mentioned, overload minotaurs like to blink around a lot, and overload captains are notoriously shifty, always teleporting around, and this weapon shoots very slowly, so personally, I hate using it as a means to stun overloads. Overload Hobgoblins or Chieftain, sure, it can be decent there because they are less mobile, but use at your own risk. If you do get the stun though, this rocket hits very hard. And if it applies Jolt to the target, then you are in luck because it lasts a while and keeps the overload from regening health while the Jolt is applied. Next, we have a weapon that is sort of the opposite of Two-Tailed Fox, a heavy weapon that is great at applying the stun, but doesn't do great damage. It is the Darcy Sniper Rifle. Its target acquired perk causes Jolt, which will stun the overload. It is a fast firing sniper, so it can easily hit an overload at pretty much any distance, but it leaves a lot to be desired in the damage department. Next, we have the new exotic Stasis Glaive Winter Bite. When you have this weapon loaded, melee hits will apply slow, which will stun an overload. However, melee based options are not the best in high end nightfalls, but you could still make it work if you know what you are doing, as the glaive blocks keep you from dying to pretty much anything. Also, the projectile that it shoots pretty much always applies freeze and not slow, so the melee is the only way I was able to stun an overload. And finally, we have an extremely strong weapon in the tractor cannon. This not only suppresses an overload and stuns it, but it also applies a 30% weakened debuff to it. It's very good with the right builds. And that is it for the exotic weapons that can stun overloads. Now let's move to the exotic armor. First, we have the Icefall Mantle Exotic Titan Arms. These give you an overshield in place of your barricade. I tested these on a non-stasis subclass and was not able to get a stun. But when you run stasis, it emits a slowing field that can stun overloads. However, the radius on this slow wave is very small, so you have to pretty much be right next to the overload. So it's not great for higher end content in my opinion. Next, we have another stasis based titan exotic, the Horfrost Z chest piece. This exotic turns your barricade into stasis crystals. These crystals will freeze enemies, but they seem to slow them first, resulting in a stun. Again, not the best option to use, but it can stun an overload. Finally, we have the best exotic for stunning overloads, the Seacant filaments. This will allow almost any weapon to stun overloads, including things like rocket launchers. It won't work with exotics that have intrinsic stunning capabilities like the Lament with built-in anti-barrier, and it is bugged it seems with the Medieval Champion Artifact mod, but it does seem to work on pretty much everything else. 
In the background footage, I have an unstoppable scout on, and when I am in my empowering rift, it allows me to shoot overload rounds with my scout rifle. Very cool. This does not work with healing rifts, and it says it grants devour, but that is only when you are running a void subclass sadly. But overall, a great exotic piece for dealing with overloads. Next, let's take a look at some weapon perks that can stun overloads, starting with my favorite, Chill Clip. Chill Clip applies slow on the top half of the magazine. So in a breach loaded grenade launcher, every grenade will apply slow, allowing you to stun overloads easily with one shot from the lingering dread. It also works very well on fusion rifles with Chill Clip, specifically the Riptide. Another fun perk that applies slow is the Cold Steel perk on the Zephyr Sword from the Dawning. It can apply slow on light or heavy attacks. I absolutely love swords, so this is like having Overload Sword built into your legendary sword. And finally, we have the Arc perk Volt Shot. Reloading after a kill will allow your next shot to apply Jolt. This rolls on the Sidearm and Scout Rifle from Season of the Plunder, the new Arc Neomina Fusion Rifle and Pulse Rifle, among a few other weapons. These are all great options for stunning overloads. Jolt is a very strong method for stunning them as it seems to last longer than suppression or slow, and it can reproc itself by doing damage. As mentioned earlier, when an overload champion is jolted, it will not regen its health, and in legend content, the jolt actually lasts long enough to get a second stun off. However, you cannot proc a second stun on master and grandmaster overloads because their stun cooldown lasts longer. So it's a pretty deadly option to use, and it's an amazing option considering it can roll on legendary weapons. So that's it for weapon perks, let's move on to abilities. So as mentioned before, the abilities that can stun overloads are suppression, jolt, and slow. Bleak Watcher is great as it supplies slow for a long time, but if many enemies are around, your turret may target other enemies instead of the overload. Regardless, it is still a fairly strong option. Other effective methods in the stasis kit include Winter Shroud, the aspect on Hunter that allows your dodge to slow enemies, Duskfield Grenades apply slow over a pretty long period, the Hunter Withering Blade and Titan Shiver Strike are also capable of applying slow, the Titan and Hunter Supers can also apply slow. So overall, stasis can actually be quite effective at dealing with overloads now. For Void, we only have a few abilities that work. The Shield Bash Melee on Titan is one way to stun, and suppression grenades can also work. Both hunter tethers will stun an overload, and interestingly, the shield bash melee while in a sentinel super will not stun an overload. Just the shield bash melee ability. And finally, that brings us to jolt. The fragment spark of shock allows our grenades to apply jolt to targets which will stun overloads. This works with any type of grenade. I did a full breakdown of all the abilities that can stun every champion, so if you want to see literally every arc grenade stun an overload, check out that video. But in the interest of saving time, I'll just be going over the abilities that work more quickly here. The Warlock Aspect Lightning Surge will allow your melee ability to jolt enemies, and two of the Hunter Aspects will also apply jolt. Lethal Current will allow your melee to apply jolt after dodging, and Tempest Strike turns your melee ability into an AoE uppercut that can also apply Jolt. Additionally, both Hunter Supers can apply Jolt. The Gathering Storm Super is very consistent for applying it, where with Arc Staff, it seems you have to be up close to the enemy to apply the Jolt. The Heavy Attack was more consistent for me, so my recommendations would be do a Heavy Attack to stun, and then follow up with the Light Light Heavy combo attacks. As you can see in the testing, Jolt was very strong for dealing with overloads. But one problem with Jolt is it is not always immediate, which can sometimes get you killed, or cause you to miss a stun if the enemy gets away from a Jolt grenade too fast or something which can be very frustrating. It can be slightly inconsistent. If you watch my video on exotics that can stun champions, you'll know the bombardiers are pretty much useless when it comes to stunning champs. So even though it says when running a void or stasis subclass that your bomb from the bombardiers will apply slow or suppression, Yes, it does apply that, but it does not stun Overload Champions for some reason. This is very unfortunate, and hopefully Bungie fixes this. Another weapon perk that I tested was Flash Counter. Melee blocked immediately after guarding disorients and weakens the attacker. This one also does not work. Disorient is not a 3.0 verb, and it also does not work on disorienting grenades on GLs. And lastly, we have the Warlock Melee Chain Lightning. It says it applies Jolt, but it does not show Jolt as a subclass verb in the menu, and it does not stun overloads. Personally, I think it should because it does apply Jolt, as you can see here on Carl, 
so I'm not sure what is up with that, but I just wanted to point out that it does not work. I wouldn't mind seeing one of the Titan Melee's applied jolt, but that might be a little too strong. Maybe they can make Thunderclap applied jolt with the point contact cannon brace. Who knows, but that's it for stuff that doesn't work. And finally, that brings us to artifact mods. The artifact mods this season are Overload Bow and Overload Auto, meaning ARs and SMGs can stun overloads. These are honestly two of the best artifact mods for overloads. Overload Bow must be drawn back fully to proc an overload shot, but it does not need to be a perfect draw. An overload auto requires sustained fire and every few bullets you will get an overload shot. In the past we have had overload hand cannon which procs on like every fourth hand cannon shot which is not great, but explosive or time payload could make it proc every two shots. And you probably already know this, but Osseo Strigo with overload SMG is pretty much a cheat code. It's insanely strong. Anyways, that was a comprehensive list of every way to stun an overload champion in Lightfall. Maybe some new ways will be added in the future, and I might just make individual videos on those and link them in the description of this video if that time comes. But for now, I hope this video was helpful and informative, and if you learned something, then a like and subscription would be greatly appreciated. And if you watch all the way to the end, then I thank you so much for doing so. As always, happy champion stunning, and take care.